Hello everyone, I'm back with a review of the SonarWorks Reference 3 speaker calibration and a demo of the setup process. We'll be looking at the install, setup and testing, measurement and results, and some comments about this product. It'll be fast paced. Uh, you uh, download the software from the website. Obviously you have to pick your operating system, in my case I'm using a Mac. And the process takes you to a screen for downloading the software and your reference file from the microphone is at the bottom of that page. And it is very self-explanatory. Lots of pop-ups, so it's hard to get this wrong. During the setup and testing, you have to unzip the files. And obviously you have a SonarWorks folder now installed on your computer. You have to select your output device. In my case, I'm using a Universal Audio Apollo. And uh, then you get into the actual calibration. The file you need for the microphone is uh, preloaded on your computer. So you have a folder with that file that you select from. And it's a real microphone, so you do have to set it up in terms of uh, your volume levels. This is, uh, again, very straightforward. And you have to ensure the microphone sensitivity is set very carefully because the software is quite sophisticated. You'll be measuring the distance between your speakers using the DSP for this. I found this to be very precise. I actually use my tape measure as well. And uh, there's a smart functionality to this. If your uh, measurements are incorrect, the uh, DSP recognizes this. In my case, I was actually moving around my monitors to make certain that my system was well calibrated. Again, the system lets you know when you're ready to go. Appreciated this review functionality. It gave me confidence that the DSP was well designed. And now we get into the actual measurement phase, which is quite precise. There's multiple measurements that you take. The uh, pop-ups guide you in terms of setting the height of the microphone, the positioning of the microphone, and actually give you targets on screen in terms of positioning the microphone throughout all of the measurement steps. You'll notice this little green and red uh, guide. Uh, this helps you go through the test process accurately. This is a real microphone, so you've got a real signal going through your interface, so be careful with your levels, but you can be confident the DSP will take you through this phase successfully. You'll have real licenses stored on your computer. And then we get into the results phase. Initially, you don't see any information because you haven't selected a file. Uh, when you select the file from the folder on your computer, you see the graph of your measurements. Here's a snapshot of the folders. When you're looking at your actual graph, you can see that you can make selections before target correction, and you'll see color-coded lines on your graph. And obviously, this uh, helps you to understand how the DSP measured your room and what the DSP is doing in terms of how it's correcting the characteristics of your room in terms of frequency response. It's important to consider what the different color codes are telling you about the state of your room in terms of frequency response and what the DSP is doing. I spent a lot of time just looking at this graph, thinking, what's it like when I'm listening to sound in my room? And is this graph showing me that accurately? And my conclusion is that it was. I found the sonar works to be very precise and thorough. I think it's a very useful DSP tool. I think it's also important that we consider a time domain analysis in terms of uh, how our room functions. Thank you very much for watching and happy monitoring and I wish you uh, good luck with all your recording projects.